Analytical Chemistry 1, Lesson 56. The Nernst equation is one of the most important in electrochemistry, and it will be central to our being able to use electrochemistry as an analytical tool. Thermodynamics has one clearly important equation. This one. Understanding the difference between delta G naught and delta G is one of the most important accomplishments for students in Chem 1050. As a reaction proceeds, delta G naught is a constant, which is defining the equilibrium endpoint of the reaction. As you know, it's just a restating of the equilibrium constant. But while delta G naught is a fixed value for a reaction at a specific temperature, delta G, by contrast, is continually changing as the reaction proceeds. The sign of delta G tells us whether the reaction is spontaneously moving forward or in reverse. And the magnitude of delta G tells us how far we have yet to go to reach the equilibrium destination. When delta G reaches zero, the reaction has finally reached equilibrium. The other variable is the reaction quotient Q. It contains all of the concentration information. When the relative amounts of all species are such that Q equals K, the reaction has arrived at equilibrium. Remember that K is just a very specific, a very special value of Q, which is the equilibrium value. So how does this translate into the electrochemistry field? Well, recall the relationship between delta G and the cell potential, E, and the corresponding relationship for standard conditions. We put these together with the Gibbs energy expression above. By simply rearranging the equation, we obtain the Nernst equation. The Nernst equation is just a reorganization of the Gibbs energy equation written for redox reactions. We can write down the Nernst equation for any redox process. In fact, it can be written down for even a half reaction or just a reduction or an oxidation. Here's the gallium half reaction we were looking at in the last lesson. The Nernst equation takes on this form. The activity of the solid is 1, and we set the activity coefficients to 1 as per our usual practice. n is the number of electrons transferred in the reaction as written. In this case, it is 3. Recall that we ended up using it as an oxidation, so switch the reaction around. The Nernst equation can still be written down for it. Just have the products and reactants switch places in the reaction quotient. Also, the side of E0 will have changed. But it is easily written down. Remember that the E naught for the reaction is as written. If you've looked up a standard reduction potential in a table, you would need to switch signs if you were using it for the reaction written as an oxidation. Here's the copper half reaction we've used. Its corresponding Nernst equation has the similar form to the gallium reduction equation, but the number of electrons is different. We usually simplify the equation a bit further by restricting our discussion to the temperature of 25 degrees Celsius. In that case, the RT over F term takes on a value measured in volts, specifically 0 0.025689 volts, or 25.7 millivolts. And working in base 10 rather than base E has some advantages as well, particularly when we start talking about concentrations in terms of p-functions, such as pH, because they are defined in base 10 logarithms. So it's good to convert uh, to them up front. We need only multiply by the natural logarithm of 10 and get a different constant factor. The cell potential changes by 59.16 millivolts over N for every factor of 10 change in concentration. For the copper case, with two electrons, that would be 29.58 millivolts per decade. But for gallium, with three, it would be 19.72 millivolts per decade change in concentration. The Nernst equation is, of course, written for complete redox reactions as well. Here is the equation we looked at earlier. The Nernst equation now has six electrons being transferred but that is because that is the form of the reaction equation in which we've chosen to written it, write it. Surely that reaction itself doesn't care at all how we write the equation, it just reacts the way it wants to. There is nothing wrong with writing the reaction in this fashion. If you work through it, you will see that there are three electrons transferred in this case. And so this is the Nernst equation now. If you work through specific examples, you would find that it gives the same results as the one above. Certain compositions of reaction participants give the same cell potential. Changes inside the logarithm are perfectly balanced by changes outside. The standard cell potential does not change. It is just n and the coefficients of the reaction participants that change with the way we write the balanced reaction equation. Half reactions are combined to form complete cells. We choose two reactions from the table of standard reduction potentials. Scale them to have the same number of electrons transferred. Do not scale the standard reduction potential. Take the one with the least positive, the most negative, potential and run it as an oxidation. 
Add the two half reactions together, canceling the electrons. Write out the corresponding Nernst equation. So how does one find E0 for the reaction? Well, there are, there are at least two approaches. One, cathode minus anode. Now we taught this in Chem 1050. It means take the standard reduction potential of the cathode reaction and subtract from it the standard reduction potential of the anode reaction. Or two, reverse the sign of the oxidation reaction at the anode. Add the result to the potential for the reduction process at the cathode. And I know they give the same result. They must be the same. But I emphasize this point because too many students switch the sign of the anode potential and then subtract that from the cathode potential. Do just one or the other. The subtraction, the subtraction in the first step is the switching of the anode reduction potential. One last thing. A reminder of how we use cell notation shorthand and how to derive the half reactions from that. Now the basic principles are perhaps best first considered experimentally. The left hand half cell is connected to the negative terminal of a voltmeter. The right hand half cell is connected to the positive or the red terminal of the voltmeter. Well, this is not quite the way the convention works, but it does allow for us to write it in such a way that the cell potential might be negative. The correct way is to write it such that it produces a positive cell potential. In that case, the cathode is on the right where reduction is occurring and the anode is on the left where oxidation is occurring. If a negative cell potential is measured, then reduction is happening in the left hand cell. To agree with the convention, the half cell's not notation should be switched around. With the electrode on the right undergoing reduction, it can be labeled as the cathode. Naturally, then, the anode is on the left where oxidation is occurring. A single vertical bar indicates an interface between phases. A double vertical bar indicates a salt bridge. The materials on each end are the electrodes to which any external components, like a voltmeter, are connected. A complete cell notation will include gas pressures and solution concentrations. Species in the same phase need to be clearly labeled. In some cases, the electrodes are inert. They do not themselves participate in a reduction or oxidation. They allow for the conduction of electrons and provide a catalytic surface on which the reduction or oxidation does occur. Here are some examples. The silver versus silver chloride half cell as the anode and the gold one plus half cell as the cathode. The two half reactions are given here and I've written the anode reaction as an oxidation. A cadmium half cell as the anode and a silver one plus half cell as the cathode. I've doubled the silver reaction so that it has the same number of electrons as the cadmium reaction. A copper two plus cell for the anode and the iron two plus three plus reaction using platinum as the catalytic inert electrode on the cathode side. The two reactions are here, and again the iron reaction is doubled to balance the electrons. On the anode side is the hydrogen electrode. Now this is not the standard hydrogen electrode because the reactants are not at standard conditions of one atmosphere pressure and one molar concentration. The cathode is the cerium 3 plus 4 plus couple using a graphite electrode as the inert electrode. This time I tailored the anode equation to match the single electron transfer to the cathode. Could have done it the way. Cell potential would not change. Reaction quotient would change. N in the Nernst equation would change.